we're going to make a broccoli and bean salad, right? And there's some important points about doing this salad, and we're going to get into them, starting off with the main event, which is broccoli. This is the vegetable that we're going to use. It's an amazing vegetable. It's extremely nutritious, right? And Kim's going to go more into the nutritional points of the broccoli, but we want you to like it and taste it, want people to eat it, so I'm going to go into the, some preparation points real quick. First of all, you see it on this tray, and it's on a towel because we want our broccoli dry. We don't want it just crunchy and crispy and al dente. We want it dry, okay? Why? Here's why. Look, I got some water here, okay? If this broccoli, if this was a pot of water and you took the broccoli out of the water and you shocked it in cold water, which is classical that people do, they'll run it under cold water to cool it down, we don't want to do that. As Soon as we take it out of the hot water, if we were blanching it, we want to drain it really good and we put it on a towel. Now, we could cool it in a refrigerator where we get convection air cooling it down. Point is we want to dry. Reason being is, if this broccoli was shocked in cold water, okay, and wasn't properly dried, this floret part is like a sponge, okay? So look what happens. If I squeeze it, look at all the water that comes out of here. And we don't want that. Why don't we want that? Is because it would dilute all the goodness that we're going to put in this bowl when we prepare it. This is the mise en place for our goodness, right? We got lemon juice, we got extra virgin olive oil, we got garlic, parsley, and we're going to put in some jalapeno chili. We're going to use less oil because we're going to add beans to it, legumes, in this case, great northern beans, loaded with protein, dietary fiber that Kim will talk more about. Now, when we combine all this together, all that goodness, if that broccoli was wet, it would dilute it. And we don't want that to happen. We want people to say, wow, this is amazing broccoli. And by this broccoli being dry and al dente, that's going to happen. Here's a couple more points. First of all, the broccoli is same size pieces. Hugely important. Consistency and size equates to consistency in cooking. Big and small don't cook the same. Also, when you have broccoli, this part's going to cook quicker than this part. So when we score or cut the stalk part, the stem part, now it cooks more evenly than if it was whole and round. Those are important points to about it. I'm going to let Kim briefly talk about some nutrition points on the broccoli before I move on. And broccoli is such a great vegetable. It provides our bodies with a lot of fiber, both insoluble and soluble fiber. The goal with fiber per day is 25 to 35 grams, which many people never really hit that high. So incorporating the broccoli with Chef's uh, example here is, and the beans is a great way to increase that fiber. Since he has blanched the broccoli as well, for those who sometimes have some GI side effects, this really helps to bring down that concern so that you can enjoy this health benefit. So Kim, you know what? Keep on going. Let's go through the whole mise en place. What about the beans? So beans are wonderful. They provide our bodies with fiber. There's tons of vitamins and minerals in beans. When we look at all the folate and all those different minerals and vitamins, beans usually are on the top of the list for those, along with a great carbohydrate and protein source. And when they study all the blue zones around the world, the, the parts of the world that have the longest living population, the most centurions, Sardinia, Italy, Okinawa, Japan, Costa Rica, the only one in the United States, Loma Linda, California, those places, all of them eat legumes. So they're an essential nutrient. What about the lemon juice, Kim? Lemon juice is a wonderful option. It provides us with vitamin C. And as we go along this uh, mise en place here, lemon juice also helps to flavor food without having to add salt. And the extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil is wonderful. It is a monounsaturated fat and it's very heart healthy. And we got the garlic and the jalapeno chili and the parsley. Three more. Exactly. These are wonderful ways of adding flavor to food without adding that salt again. Unfortunately, 
And most American diets, we have way too much sodium. So these are wonderful ways of adding vegetables as well as herbs and spices without adding salt. You know, and I'll tell you, a lot of people don't realize it, but parsley, not only is it a great herb, it's fresh, it provides a lot of flavor. It is loaded, loaded, loaded with vitamin C. Most people don't go to the store and say, oh, I think I'll grab some vitamin C on the shelf, right? You know, but that's what happens when you go and you use fresh fruits and vegetables, okay? So, I gotta do two more things to the mise en place that I wanna show you. I'm gonna, first I'm gonna do with the garlic, then I'm gonna show you how to blister a chili on the stove. So now, I'm gonna go on garlic, okay? Our gar I have garlic already chopped, but I wanna show you something about chopping it that's really important. Okay, so, first of all, I got a towel here that I put on my cutting board. And actually, I think there's one more important part I need to show you. Right now, my cutting board doesn't move, okay? Reason why is because I got a wet towel underneath it, and this is wet paper towels. If I didn't have this, this cutting board would slide. And that's not good because a cutting board that moves isn't as safe, all right? So by taking these wet paper towels, putting them on the table, now my cutting board isn't going anywhere, right? So when I'm going and I'm cutting and chopping, and I'll get a little bit into knife skills in a moment, but that's important that my cutting board is stationary. Now, I got a couple garlic cloves here and I wanna show you, but I'm gonna peel them on this paper towel, okay? Why do I wanna do that? Here's why. Most people don't wash their onions before they cut, peel them. Most people aren't gonna take a head of garlic and wash it before they go to separate the clothes and peel it. And you know why you wanna, you, you wanna have this paper towel? Is because that onion and that clove of garlic was in a bin in the store with a whole bunch of other onions and clove, heads of garlic. And who knows who was touching it and what's on there, right? So if you did that straight on your cutting board, you just cross-contaminated the surface of your cutting board with everything that was on the outside of that onion or garlic. So I could help reduce that risk, okay, by having this paper towel. Now, the next thing is, all the research that I ever looked at that if there's a health benefit to garlic, which there's many, right, it's in the oil. It's in the allicin that's in the oil of the garlic. So if you take garlic and you take a knife and you press on it, to you know, try to break it so you could peel it. If you press too hard, the problem with doing that is you release the oil, the oil sticks to the paper, that sticks to your finger, and you are losing what science says has the benefit, right? So instead, if we take our clove of garlic and I go and I'm not gonna cut right through, I'm just gonna push it down and look what happens. See, I'm peeling this. Now I'm gonna go to the other side, like so. It's the exact same thing, and I'm gonna rock this clove out, just like this. I'm using my knife to hold down this peel, and what happens is, look, here's my garlic clove intact, and here's my paper right here. So the oil is still inside, and here's the paper. That's what's, now I could put that garlic onto my cutting board, okay, and then I could proceed, cut with the back part of the knife. If you hold, cut the, think of the physics, can't cut the tip of my finger if the blade is touching my knuckle. Okay, so now that we slice the garlic, now we release the oil. I could see the oil on my knife, okay? So now, okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of the salt, and actually some of the pepper that was in my recipe here, Two reasons. One, salt's abrasive. It'll help facilitate the chopping of the garlic and it'll keep that oil together and it's going in my recipe anyhow. So now, again, I'm on my knuckle. I do a coarse chop like so. Okay, now that I got a coarse chop, I really release the oil. Now, I could mash it like so, just with my knife, right? So they sell a lot of garlic presses. Some you gotta watch because you could lose some of the oil in the press. Now I really release the oil. But look what happens. I could scrape it all up 
with my knife and capture all that oil. Okay, I could give it one quick little chop again like so. Give it one quick little smash. Now I got a garlic paste. Look at that. And now I'm able to capture just by scraping all this goodness up all the benefits that science says garlic has. And whoever's going to taste this salad, it's going to have extra garlic. So now we're going to show you how to take a jalapeno chili that is normally really sharp, right? It's, it's hot. That's why a lot of people don't like it. But if you take it and blister the skin, you could diminish the potency and it makes it so much more palatable. I just got a simple two pronged fork. I'm going to skewer it like so. I have a flame here and I'm going to put it on the flame and we're just going to blister the skin. Now, I'm going to take you, we don't want to blacken or burn it because if we do that, you have the carcinogens that come along with it in anything that's blackened or burned. So I'm going to do this in some stages to show you what I want and how it works, okay? And that way it'll explain what I'm talking about that much better. So I'm going to blister some and you'll be able to see what that's like. And then I'm going to do it where it goes beyond blistering to show you what we don't want to do, okay? So we're going to get one that's just, and you know what comes after black is what's even worse is gray. When you see gray, that's like ash. Now you mutilated that chili. Okay, so now to get it off, we have some plastic wrap. We're just going to put it in here like so. What happens when you cover it in plastic wrap, just for like 30 seconds, the heat will steam this and it'll peel so much easier. Also, it's a good idea to take your fork and either run it under cold water or something so if you set it down, you don't inadvertently touch it and burn your fingers. So now I'm gonna show you about peeling this. Okay, so now you saw how to char that chili, right? So we took it out of the plastic wrap and look what happens, right? It just peels right off. And so you really don't need to blacken it. This is the part you don't want to do. You don't want it blackened like that. All you need is just this little bit of blistering and it comes right off, okay? Then I do it on the towel, just like I did the garlic. It captures all the parts I'm taking off. Once you get that chili done, you okay, and you cut it in half, now you see the veins and you see these seeds. That's hot too. So we want to take that and remove it with a knife, right? So very simply, you could just take that vein of seeds out like so. It comes right out. Scrape any remaining seeds. And then what you have is this chili. And now there's no veins, no seeds, okay? So I'm going to set that over here, right? And so now you take your chili that has no skin, no veins, no seeds, right? And now, very simply, just like on the garlic, right, the way you would cut, okay, the knife goes on your knuckle. You're going to make julienne strips like so, and then cut them crossways. And then now you get a nice small dice like that. Okay, there's our jalapeno chili. We're going to add this to what we already have. So now the salad will have extra, extra chili and garlic. So now we're going to put that there. All right? Okay. So now we start to make this, okay? Classic vinaigrette, right? Three parts oil, one part acid. We don't want to do that, right? Because a tablespoon of oil has got how many calories, Kim? A uh, hundred. <laughs> right. So you're talking 100, 120 calories in a tablespoon of oil. It don't matter what kind. That's a lot of calories, right? So we want to use less oil, okay? So we're going to do equal parts. We're not going to do three to one. We're not going to do two to one. We're going to do one to one. And to compensate for using less oil and to make it thick, we're going to thicken it with these legumes, right? Fiber and protein, that's what we want, okay? So our oil goes in. Now, if you just took you know, butter and put it on a piece of bread or dip bread in olive oil, that olive oil isn't working for you or the butter. It serves as nothing more than a moisturizer for that bread. When you do something like this, 
this oil, you are infusing it with flavors. So now it's working for you. Now we add the garlic, right? When we put the garlic in, now we got a garlic oil, right? If I added lemon zest to this, now I got a lemon infused garlic oil. If I add my jalapeno chili to it, right? Now I got a chili and then lemon and garlic oil. So I'm gonna add my parsley to this, okay, like so. I got my salt and pepper, and now I'm gonna whisk in lemon juice, all right? This is gonna help to create an emulsion. I'm pouring in slowly, right? Because I wanna incorporate all this and get a nice emulsion going. And this becomes my dressing for that broccoli that is nice and dry and crisp and al dente. Okay, now, again, as I wanted to tell you, to compensate for the lack of oil, here's what I got so far. That's my dressing, but I wanna thicken it because I want this broccoli to really stick to all the goodness in this bowl. So, you could take a portion of these beans, right? And I'm just gonna mash some. Now you can mash it with a knife. I just happen to have gloves, so I'm gonna use my hands because I wanna show you, look. So I'm gonna make this just like mashed potatoes. Look what I'm doing, I'm macerating these legumes. See that? And look, it's going right into here. I'm, on, I'm not gonna do all of it, just a little bit, okay? And that's how eat, because they're cooked. Now, but by mashing them this way, okay, here's what's gonna happen, all right? When I go to mix this, I'm really going, and you could take a spoon or something and mash it too, a lot of ways to do it, okay? I just work with my, I'm a touchy-feely person and I do a lot with my fingers, so the gloves help make it sanitary. So now, check this out. Look how thick this got. You can see the tracks of the whip, right? That's gonna, this broccoli is gonna absorb all the goodness in this bowl. So now, because it's dry, Okay, we're gonna take our broccoli, put it in like so, add our remaining beans, okay? And then now, you know, again, I, cause I got gloves, you could, I mix it with a spatula, but I wanna get all this absorbed, okay? And I'm gonna mix all this together. Look, I just, I scraped the bottom of the bowl. And now this broccoli captured all that goodness so now when you go to put this and serve this, look how beautiful this is and how nutritious and healthy. We talked about in our slides how to love the foods that love you back. Everything in here is gonna love you back. So there we go. And so now you can see something loaded with dietary fiber. Everything will love you back in there.